I have a passion for beer, but I also love my family and want to spend quality time with them. I like to keep my brew days short so I can enjoy some time with my family. Using the brew in a bag method allows me to make all grain beer. It's simple, quick, and it makes delicious beer. I'm gonna show you how to do it too, and we'll start right now. When I first started home brewing, I started with extract kits, and that was great. I made good beer, but soon I was ready to take the leap to the next step, all grain. If you've been contemplating going all grain, I highly recommend it. When I first started, I was overwhelmed with the amount of options. When I first started doing my research, I thought I was gonna need a whole lot of new equipment and the price tag was very quickly adding up until I found the brew bag. With the brew in the bag method, I learned that most of my home brewing equipment would be sufficient. All I needed was this little bag and I could start brewing all grain. For about $30, I was sold. For today's beer, I'm going to be making a blonde ale. I'm going to put the recipe in the description below. But you don't need to make this beer. You can actually make any beer that you want. I'm just going to be showing you how to use the brew in a bag to make that beer. I actually recommend, if you're, this is your first all grain batch, that you buy a kit. Just make sure you get an all grain kit. And if you're purchasing it from either your local homebrew shop or an online retailer, make sure if you don't have a grain mill, you're going to need to get your grains crushed or pre-milled for you. Throughout this video, I'm gonna be sharing some tips with you as well, what I've learned along the way of using the brew bag or, or the brew in a bag method. Um, the first tip that I'm gonna share with you is if you are not milling your own grains, if you buy them from your local homebrew shop or you order them online, uh, most homebrew shops and online retailers will give you the option to double crush your grains. Uh, for the brew bag, uh, the brew bag method, it's actually quite beneficial to have a finer crush on your grains. You'll have a little bit better efficiency for that. So if it's possible, get your grains double crushed or double milled, or just ask the local homebrew shop, can you run it through your mill twice? The next thing you need to think about for the brew in a bag method is your kettle size because when you do the brew in a bag method, you're actually doing a full volume mash and boil, which means you're putting all of the water in at the beginning of your mash. For today's batch, I'm making a five and a half gallon batch of blonde ale. I'm gonna be using a little over nine gallons of water, which means once I put my grains in, even a 10 gallon kettle is gonna be really cutting it close. When I first started, I had an eight gallon kettle and I did use the brew in a bag method. I just wasn't able to make five and a half gallon batches. The largest size batch I would do in an eight gallon kettle was about a four gallon batch. So keep that in mind. The brew in the bag is going to use the full volume at the beginning of your mash. So make sure your kettle is big enough for the batch size that you're going to make. It's time to make some beer. The first thing you'll need to do is fill your kettle. For this recipe, I used a bit over nine gallons of water. Start heating your strike water. For this recipe, I'll be mashing at 152 degrees Fahrenheit. So I brought my strike water to 157 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll want to heat it up to about five degrees above your mash temperature, because after you add your grains and stir your mash, you'll lose a little heat. Once your strike water is heated, turn off your burner and add your brew bag. I like to use these little binder clips to hold the bag in place. Once your bag is secure, it's time to add your grains. I usually pour in about half and then stir well. Then I add the rest and stir it again. You'll want to make sure the grains aren't clumping together and remember to stir the bottom as well. Once your grains are mixed in, 
I like to take a temperature reading to make sure I'm close to my mash temperature. Plus or minus a few degrees is okay. Put your lid back on, and now your mash is started. Set a timer for 60 minutes. It really helps to cover your kettle too to keep it insulated. An old sleeping bag or blankets work awesome. About halfway through the mash, I usually like to give it a stir and take a gravity reading to see how it's coming along. But it's totally not necessary. You could just let it sit for the full 60 minutes and then take your gravity reading at the end. Once your 60 minutes is up, it's time to remove your bag. This step can be a little tricky if you're brewing alone because the bag can be quite heavy. I made this little pulley system pretty cheaply and it really helps me to drain the bag. If you are brewing with someone, they could hold the bag or you could take the bag and place it in a bucket to drain. Then add any wort collected back to your kettle for the boil. I like to pull my bag part way then get my burner going and let my bag drain while my water is heating up to boil. If you don't have a pulley system or you don't have somebody to hold your bag, you can just put your bag in a bucket to drain and then add that wort back to your kettle for the boil. So the rest of your brew day is now the same as an extract batch. You'll bring your wort to a boil and you'll add your hops depending on your hop schedule. For this beer, I added one ounce of Cascade at 60 minutes, one Whirlflock tablet and yeast nutrient at 15 minutes. At 10 minutes, I added a half ounce of Cascade and Simcoe. After the boil's over, chill your wort down. I chilled mine to about 70 degrees and transferred it to my fermenter. I'll be fermenting this batch with Imperial Yeast's flagship at 64 degrees for about a week and then I'll raise the temperature to 72 until final gravity is reached. That's it. Brew day's done. Time to shred some trails.